today's video, I'm telling you guys about the worst pets in Prodigy. Yes, yeah, so you guys heard me right. In this video, I'm telling you guys about the worst pets. So without a further ado, let's hop straight into our video. And I'm your host, One Doctor Genius, and let's get straight to it. Alright guys, so as you know, there are six different pet types in Prodigy, right? We have the Earth pet type, we have the Ice pet type, we have the Electric pet type, we have the Fire pet type, we have the Water pet type, and we have the Shadow pet type, right? Now, of course, we don't have Shadow pets, but they're still, I guess you could call them semi-pets, right? As you guys know, out of these pet types, there's one pet which is the absolutely worst to take on a battle. And that is the water pet type. Right guys, so I'm gonna tell you guys something about the water pet type. Right, water pet types are extremely weak in Prodigy, right? Now here's the thing which you may or may not know. Water pet types are weak against earth and electric. That's two things which it's weak against, right? Every single else pet type is weak against only one thing. Now, I'm going to consider everything neutral against Astral, just as an FII. So basically, this is the only elemental pets which are weak against two different things in the game, right? So, Earth is, so water is weak against Earth and Electric. So, anyways, this is already at a disadvantage because it's weak against two pets instead of one. And if you look anywhere else, these pets are only weak against once. Right? You can see Firefly Forest, weak against Bonfire Spire. Shiver Chill Mountain, Bonfire Spire. Uh, Skywatch, Shiver Chill Mountain, Bonfire Spire, and Shipwreck Shore. So, immediately, this puts all water pets at a disadvantage. Now, in this video, I'm telling you guys what the worst water pets in the game are, right? So, let's hop straight to that. Water pets are at a huge disadvantage in the game already. But what puts them on another level of disadvantage is that some fire pets, their only weakness is strong against them, right? Certain fire pets have electric spells unlocked, which water is weak against, right? So, when this happens, water pets basically get wrecked by the fire pets, right? And that honestly isn't too good, right? So, this basically puts water pets at the worst category of pets in the game game. Of course, you also do want a water pet up just in case of an arena battle, but you guys can see there there's a lack of water pets in the game. Right over here, we have the Flick Fit and the Sazag. Now, both of these pets are pretty good. Their power to hearts ratio is pretty high, but this means but this means if they go up against another pet which has a high power to hearts ratio, right? Which has a high power to hearts ratio. And that's an earth or water type pet. These pets are absolutely dying within seconds, right? So I will be showing you guys how quick and easy it is for these pets to die because of their weakness. Now, another thing which you may or may not notice is there are not too many water type pets in the game, right? There's only a few pets which are designated as water type pets, right? Like over here, we have the Gwandi and the Crookfang. And you guys can tell these also have a high power to hearts ratio. Now, next up on our list, we basically have the River Neek, Caller, and Creator. Now, all of these guys have a power to health ratio, which is mainly in between. I don't think there are many water type pets which have a high level of hearts, which is completely concerning because if these pets don't have a high level of hearts, they won't be able to survive against the stronger opponent's pets. And it seems like almost all of the water type pets either have a high heart bonus or a medium type of heart bonus. And over here, we have the Funkeel, the Beniel, and the Fathom. Now, these pets are pretty cool if you guys ask me. They do have a variety of spells, although they aren't exactly the best in the game. And guys, it's become pretty obvious that there's a lack of water type pets in the game compared to every other type. Right over here, we have the Squibble, Squabble, and Squirrel. Now, these pets do have a high power ratio, but they don't have good hearts. Alright guys, so in the water type pets, there's a certain trend. Majority of the water type pets don't have a lot of hearts. And they do do a lot of power damage, but they don't have a lot of hearts. So water type versus fire usually destroys the fire type. But sometimes the fire types have electric spells, which destroys the water type. But that's actually pretty rare. Right? And this pattern follows almost everything except for the Mimic. The Mimic, on the other hand, has a huge amount of hearts with very little power, right? Yeah, this trend kind of follows along with the Trample and the Stampede. They don't have a lot of health, nor do they have a lot of damage. They're just in between, which would make them perfect. But yeah, that's a thing. And now, the last few water type pets which we have is Divadile, who's an epic. And even the epic doesn't have such a high power to damage ratio. So you guys can tell water type pets are mainly focused on doing damage because they're weak against so much. But this does not help them with the matter of fact that their health is super low. And yeah, basically that is the weakest pet type in the game, and now I'm going to equip some of these pets and show you how easy it is for these pets to die. Alright, our first opponent has been seized, and it is a Scally. Right, so let's head up into a battle with our Sazag against the Scally and see how this battle ends out going, right? 
Over here, you guys can see my Sazak has come up front, and at level 67, it has 6,000 hearts, and the Scally has 83. Now, over here, you guys can tell we're immediately at a disadvantage because none of our spells are even able to, like, do a lot of damage to the opponent. So, like, let's cast the Water Spell Torrento and see how much damage this does. Ship Plowy, here we go, and you guys can see my spell did 2,000 damage, and now the opponent monster called this week. So let's see how much damage the opponent monster does, and it seems like the opponent monster did 2,000 damage. And if you guys look at this, Prodigy is making it really hard for me to prove my point today. <laughs> but anyways guys, you can tell that the earth type pets are able to do a lot more damage to my monsters than usual. And let's switch over to our fishbowl and show you guys its power to damage ratio, right? So our fishbowl is a level 91. It's um, a bit closer to this guy's health. And you guys can see this 2,914 damage. Now, what happens is other type pets usually end up doing 900 damage less up to 1,000. So it's not too big of a difference, but still 900 health can be the difference between winning a game and losing one. Trust me, guys, right? So basically, water type pets are the weakest in the game. And in this one, I... See, do you guys see that? See what happened? That spell, if it would have been casted by my wizard, I would have been able to two-shot the Scally. But right now, I've had to use four different attacks on this guy. So this shows you guys that water-type pets are extremely weak, and they have absolutely nothing to protect themselves, right? Except for water spells. But yeah, let's cast a spell down portal and finish off the Scally and put out two new pets. Alrighty guys, after casting an insane amount of spells, the Scally is finally defeated. Now, if we had done that battle with our wizard, we would have probably ended it in two attacks. But our pets over here took approximately eight attacks to finish him off. And you know what's diff and you know what's the same thing? Our Sazag and our fish will manage to do the same amount of damage to the opponent monster, despite the matter of fact that they both are at a different level, right? They both are at a different level, yet they both manage to do only 2,000 damage, right? That is insanely low, and if you ask me, that's kind of crazy. This just shows how big of a disadvantage water pets are. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these pets to Skywatch as well to show you guys that these pets aren't really good. Right, let's head over here. Bam! Skywatch, let's find a pet to battle again. Wow! Well, you look at that, another hop. So let's head into a battle against this monster and prove our point correct once again, right? So you guys will see, basically, all of my pets are going to be up. And this is going to be taking way longer for me to defeat these pets than it will be for in general, right? So let's cast our spell, Taranzo. Alright guys, so over here you guys can see basically the opponent pet cast their spell and it does 2980 damage to us. That's almost 3000 damage. Now our wizard on average does 3000 damage to the opponent pet types. Now do remember that these pets can be extremely strong if used correctly. If used incorrectly, these pets are like absolute garbage. And over here you guys can see my pets and that last attack did 3000 damage to our pet. Now, I'm hoping we can cast the spell down portal to show you guys how much damage it does to the behind pets and the pet in front. Right, so we've answered our question correct and now we're casting our spell so you guys will see my pet will only be able to do approximately 2000 damage to the pet in front and the pets in back. Right, now it did do a lot of damage to the ice pet for some reason, which is weird, but you guys saw when I attacked the electric pet, it just showed weak, right? So that means this pet isn't strong enough to defeat that guy. Now let's cast a water spell on this guy because water spells which aren't like 3% attacks tend to do more damage. But you guys will notice that but you guys will notice that this ice mon that the electric monster is able to do way more damage or as much damage as our wizard would be able to do just a little bit less. Right here he cast a spell doing 2997 damage and our pet is defeated, right? Let's put up the fishbowl and see how this guy does. Alrighty guys, so now our pet over here is casting its spell and we're still barely managing to do 2,000 damage while well, our opponent pet does like a huge huge amount doing 3,000 damage per attack Meaning this guy would be able to three shot us But it took our wizard approximately three attacks just to get his health down this much It would have taken our wizard only like two attacks So you guys can tell you have to use these pets properly and these pets are actually pretty weak Alright guys, so I'm just gonna finish off this battle quickly and I'll be back Alright guys, so we've cast our spell on on the ice pet and you guys can see we managed to do 2857 damage Now this is a lot more damage than what we managed to do to the electric pet right now Let me tell you guys the only place where water type pets are actually strong, right? Let's head over to that location now Alright guys now the only location where water pets are strong is bonfire spire, right? Water pets are strong against fire, it's pretty obvious. 
Now, water pets are the only weakness, so you guys should have a water pet on your team at all costs. But over here, you guys can see basically our water pet is going to be going into a battle. Now, right now, this pet will be doing a lot less damage than my other pet, so let me just switch over. Right now, if you look over here, the t the tiny girl will do a lot less damage than he would in general. The tiny girl barely managed to do 2,000 damage, despite it being only 6... Despite it being only 8 levels less. Right now let's cast our spell and see how much damage we do compared to that. Alrighty guys, here we go. We're casting our spell. And Shaplawi, we just did 3,338 damage. And that is how much damage our wizard would manage to do without any special power bonuses or the crown. Right? And that pet did 1,000 damage right over there. Right, so right now, this pet isn't doing as much damage as possible because it does not have a high damage ratio. But you guys can tell these pets are strong. At this rate, their opponent pet would have to cast approximately 6 or 7 spells to defeat my monster in to all. Right now, over here, it missed a spell, so let's test out how good this Azag is. Now, I'm going to cast a spell down portal, right? Correcto mundo! Here we go, we've cast our spell, and as you guys can see, our attack managed to do 3,000 damage to both pets, right? And that almost liberated half of the opponent Tiny Girl's health in the back. Right, now this pet seems like it might be able to do more damage, so let's cast another spell and test this out. Bam! Here you guys can see, I did 3,139 damage, and now my pet is under level by approximately... 17 levels so if our pet was a couple levels higher i think we might have been able to do 4,000 damage so that shows you guys these pets are weak these pets are extremely weak in prodigy but you should still have them in case of a fire pet so all in all water type pets are the weakest pet types in the game right guys do not get these pet types unless you're doing pvp arena battles or you're going into bonfire spire now, if you, now, guys, I would recommend you guys get water type pets when you start off in the game because they will help you out a lot, trust me. Alright, guys, so if you guys enjoyed this video and found this informational, I'd recommend you guys hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, and give this video a mangas thumbs up if you guys haven't already. And if you have, you're awesome. I will be catching you all next time. One Doctor Genius, out the house.